Hey there, this is Kamal, and in this video, we're going to see some of the most important plugins that you need to have when you're just getting started with WordPress. So, let's get this started. Alright, so first things first, if you have no idea what WordPress is and how to get started with it, I've already done a crash course on that, I'll link that video in the description down below, you can go there and check that out, and once you're done with that, then you can carry on from here. So in simple terms, WordPress is a content management system. So essentially what it means is that using WordPress, you can create websites on the fly using the drag and drop interface that they provide. And in order to actually make WordPress work, you have to host it on a local server or an online server which you can rent or buy. And specifically for this video, I'll be using a hosting service called as Bluehost. And the reason why that I'm using this is because Bluehost is actually one of the top most recommended WordPress providers by WordPress.org. And since they are recommended, their interface is much more tweaked towards WordPress. And as a beginner, it'll be easy for you to get started using the simple interface that they provide. All right, so with that out of the way, let's get this started. Okay, so this is my WordPress dashboard. And in here, let's go to the plugin section and let's click on add new. All right, so before moving further, I just wanted to say that it's not easy for me to pick out the best plugin for each and every scenario. So I'll only be covering the most important plugins that you need to have when you're just getting started with WordPress. And we'll be going category wise for each and every section and we'll see the top plugin in that particular section or the plugin that I most prefer using. So with that, the first section that we're going to cover are page builders. So there are many page builders in the plugin library of WordPress and each of them have their own pros and cons. And the most popular ones are Elementor, Divi, Beaver Builder, Gutenberg and so on and so forth. So let's first go to the page builder section. So if you don't know what a page builder is, as the name implies, we use page builders to actually create the layout of the page. And they have their own interface and list of things that you can choose from. And using those elements, you can actually build the page from scratch. So if you don't want to use a page which is given by default by a particular theme, then you can use these page builders and actually edit that theme and create a new page or the available components. But you have to keep one thing in mind, and that is that not every page builder is compatible with every theme. So your particular theme might not be compatible with a particular page builder. So you have to check that before actually installing the page builder. And most of the themes actually support Elementor. And also that's the page builder that I generally use. So this is what I generally use to create the websites. And this is actually quite good. And they offer a quite a lot of things for the free version as well. And one neat thing about Elementor is that you can actually install some other plugins to actually add some more elements into Elementor. Like you can add some more add-ons for the Elementor page builder and that will actually give you a lot more options to choose from. If you want, you can go with Beaver Builder or any other page builder as well. So the next section that we're gonna cover is the SEO. So for any website, having an optimized SEO is a must and should, because only by doing so, you'll be ranked top in the Google search results. So if you search for SEO plugins, so there are multiple plugins that you can choose from here as well. So the most popular one is Yoast SEO, and it's been here for a long time, and most people prefer this. So this is good, you can go with this, but I prefer using Rank Math over Yoast SEO because I find that Rank Math has much more better options for the free version and also it's pretty easy to get started with Rank Math SEO. So this is my personal choice, you can go with Yoast SEO or Rank Math or any other one that you can choose from. Alright, so we are covered with the page builders and we are done with the SEO section. Apart from these two plugins, we also need to take care of our site's security. So when it comes to security, there are two main things. The first one is that you're going to have a lot of spam comments in your WordPress website. The second one is the overall security for your website. So let's first take care of the spam. So if you search for spam, so we have a lot of options here as well. And I think this is the one that you generally get when you install WordPress for the first time by default. So if you want, you can go with this. So it's actually pretty good. It has around 5 million plus active installations. So if you want, you can go with this. But the one that I use is anti-spam B, specifically for spam comments and it's actually quite good. So if you want, you can go with this. This is my personal choice. So apart from spam, you also need to take care of the overall security. So if you type in security, so WordFence is actually the most popular plugin when it comes to security and it's actually quite good. So if you want, you can go with it. It actually takes care of most of the vulnerabilities that your website might have. Apart from this, you can also go with iTheme security. So this is actually a bit newer compared to WordFence. But this is also quite good and this is what I generally use and what I prefer using. So if you want, you can go with iTheme security or WordFence as well. Alright, so we are done with the security and the next thing that we need to take care of is the optimization of our website. And if you haven't seen my video on how to optimize a WordPress website, I'll link that video in the description down below. You can go there and check that out. And in that video, I have already explained how we can optimize our WordPress website. And in that, the two main things that you need to keep in mind is one is that you have to have a CDN. The second one is that you have to optimize your images. 
when it comes to CDN, there are multiple options that you can choose from. But the one that I use is Cloudflare and that's also the most popular one. So it's actually quite good. So if you want, you can go with that. And in the CDN section, I don't think I see that here. Let me search for Cloudflare directly. Yeah, so this is the plugin. So for this to actually work, you need to have a Cloudflare account. So you have to go to the website and register for a new account. And once you're done with that, they'll give you an API key and you have to paste that in the settings of this particular plugin and your Cloudflare will be active. And one more thing that I need to mention is that if you're using Bluehost as your hosting servers, then if you go to my site section and open the site that you're currently working on, and if you go to performance, then you'll see that Cloudflare is actually one of the options that you can choose from for your server. So if you want, you can go with the Cloudflare and I think that improves the website speed quite a lot. So apart from all of these things, the main issue that you need to take care of is backing up your website. So when it comes to backing up, the plugin that I generally use is Updraft Plus. So this is the plugin that I use and it's actually quite good. So this is generally what I use on all my WordPress websites. So you can go with this if you want. So those were the most important categories and the plugins in each of these categories that you actually need to have to create a good WordPress website. Apart from these categories, there are some more categories which are actually important, but they're optional so you can install them if you really have the requirement. And the first one is specifically for e-commerce websites. So when it comes to e-commerce website, you need to have a particular plugin where you can actually see and list out all your products. And the most popular one in that is WooCommerce. So this is the plugin. So if you have an e-commerce website, then WooCommerce is actually a plugin that you must and should have on your website. Apart from that, if you want to create any types of forms like contact me form or newsletter or subscription form, then you need to have a form plugin as well. So when it comes to form, the one that I use is WP forms and this is actually the most popular option as well. Apart from that, Ninja forms is actually quite good as well. So you can go with that if you want, or you can go with WP forms. And the next thing is that you have to have a better comment section. So when it comes to your default comment section, they're not that good in WordPress. So you have to have a plugin to take care of all your comments. The one that I use is called as Discuss. So this is the one that I use and it's actually my personal preference. It's not that good and it's not completely free, but this is what I prefer using on my website. If you want, you can go with other options as well. There are multiple things that you can choose from here and you can go with any one that you like and install that on your website. The next thing that you're gonna see is called as a migration. So if you have a local installation of your WordPress website and you want to actually make it so that that WordPress website is available online, then you have to transfer all your files from your local server to the online hosting platform. And you can do that manually if you want, but it's quite tedious since you have to take care of a lot of things. And the one that I use is all-in-one migration. So it's called as all-in-one WP migration. This is what I use to actually transfer my local installation to the online server. If you want, you can go with duplicated as well. This is also quite good, but I prefer using all-in-one migration and I find it to be pretty easy to understand. So the last thing that we can cover is an analytics section. I mean, you can go to the official Google Analytics page to actually see your progress, but having a small snippet of that in your WordPress installation will make things a lot easier for you. So there are multiple plugins in this section as well. The one that I use is called as Monster Insights. So if you search for Google Analytics, so this is the one that I use by Monster Insights. Along with this, the one other plugin that I also use sometimes is called as Google Analytics by Exact Metrics. This is also quite good, even though it has not that good rating, it's actually quite good. But Monster Insights is my first preference. So this is what I generally use on a regular basis. And in the upcoming video, we'll actually see how we can incorporate Google Ads onto our own WordPress installation. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you have liked what you've seen till now. If you did, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.